Hello and welcome back to another Maya tutorial. In this video we're going to explore the basic tools and how to manipulate some simple objects. So hopefully you've seen my getting started in Maya 2016 tutorial so you know how to set up a project folder and you know where to find certain information. Now before we start with this one we need to actually give the object a name. So I'm going to go to Windows, Outliner and have a think about what you might want to call your object. Now since I'm not making anything specific, I can't really give it a specific name, so I'm just going to double click on this and I'll call it part one. But do think carefully about what you want to call these objects. I'll just move the outliner down and out the way for now. We need the channel box open. If you remember, that's at the top right corner of the screen and it's the symbol on the far right. Click on that and we need to use this information. So our translate X, Y and Z is the position of my object on the grid. I'm just going to type in zeros to make sure that's exactly in the center. It's always good practice to model from the center of the grid. And what we're going to do now is have a look at moving, rotating and actually resizing or rescaling an object. So if we go over to the left of the screen, we've got our Move tool, our Rotate tool, and our Scale tool. So let's click on Move, and you'll see we've got three arrows. And if we rotate around, those arrows move, and they're, they're kind of locked with the grid. So we actually have our Y, our Z, and our X axis. So if we want to move, let's say on the X axis, we can just click and drag that X arrow. So if I actually move that around, it's just moving along the X axis. And you'll see if I move it in one direction, in our channel box, we've got a number up here. We've got an attribute. So our translate X has a positive number. If I move it in the opposite direction, if I go past zero, so past the center of the grid, we've now got a negative number. And that's the same for the other axis as well. With Y, if I move it up, a positive number, down below zero or below the grid is negative, and then of course the same for Z with forwards and backwards. I'm going to press Z on my keyboard to actually undo these moves. So you might want to press it a few times just to go back to the center, or simply type in zeros on your translate X, Y, and Z. Now, a quick tip with the move tool is to just use the arrows. Avoid using the center of the move tool because that will move in all three axes at the same time and it's very tricky to actually handle that. You can see if I move it around, it's actually changed the attributes on all my X, Y, and Z settings here in my channel box. So I'm just going to zero those back off. And now let's have a look at rotate. Basically the same, avoid using the center because it will rotate in all different directions. I'll just press Z to undo that. Just use the actual colored circles here. So we've got one for Y, you've got one for X, and then of course one for Z. And have a think about where you want to position objects. So if we wanted to position this so it's like a coin on its side on top of the grid, what we could do is rotate it around and then rather than leaving it there we could type in exactly 90 for 90 degrees in our rotate X in the channel box. So we know that 360 degrees is one circle or one rotation 180 is half a turn, 90 is a quarter. So we can type in 90 there, and then we can use the move tool to actually move that up. And what I can do is use my orthographic view to my advantage. So rather than guessing where that is actually on the grid, I could just press space, go into either my front or my side view. So let's go into front, hold the mouse over that, and press space. And I can now actually move that up to wherever I want it. Now there's no other objects for it to line up to, but if you did have, you could actually use 
your different views. If you look closely, you can actually see a thicker line going across here. That is actually the grid itself. So I could line it up to that if I want to. Press space and go back into perspective. But it's a good idea to keep switching into different views if you have different objects to line up. Lastly is the scale tool. Now, I'm just going to type in zero on my rotate to put it back and zero on my translate to put that back to where it was. Now with the scale tool, this is where you do want to use the center of the tool because you want to scale the whole object in one go. Alternatively, use one of the, the boxes at the top, so that's the, the Y axis. Then of course you've got your Z and your X as well, so you could actually squash that and manipulate it. So have a bit of a practice with those, have a bit of fun. And what we can do is combine those three basic tools with some different modes. So if we right click on our object and hold the right button in, currently we're in object mode and that will select and manipulate the entire object. What we're going to do next is have a look at edge, face and then vertex. And these are just different parts. So some will speak for themselves so we know what an edge is, we know the edges of the different parts of our object. A face is a whole face. Uh, obviously if you have more divisions it's just going to be one particular part. And a vertex a vertex is where two or more edges meet, so you might want to zoom in and actually select particular parts. And you can select multiple vertices, edges or faces by holding shift, and then you can actually select as many as you want. So if I selected these four, I could use my move tool and I could just move that particular part of the object. We can also rotate and scale and we can do anything we want with this. The only thing you have to be careful of is not to make it overlap itself. So for example you wouldn't want to move that so it's overlapping there. Then you get hidden faces. That can cause a lot of problems later on. So make sure you always give yourself a gap if you wanted to move that further over here to the left you will have to move perhaps these two as well or you could move this entire face okay some other interesting things you can actually do is select multiple in one go so if you wanted to select let's say half of the object we could actually highlight half of the object and that will select all of these vertices and we can then move that whole section of the object. You just have to be careful to select only what you want. Now for example, if this object was taller, if I go back to object mode and if I scale this up so the whole thing's taller and I'm going to go to any one of these, edge, vertex or face. I'll go to face for now. If for example you highlighted these three, it looks like we've only selected these three faces, but because you highlighted, you will actually select some on the other side. So be careful of that. Sometimes it's good just to select them individually. Select one, hold shift, and then select the other ones that you want. Alternatively, if you're in something like vertex mode, if you know you want to highlight, you might want to switch into wireframe mode by pressing 4. It can look a bit confusing at first, but you do get used to that. And you can then make sure you're just selecting those that you want. If you do select too many, just rotate around. If it helps, go back into the shaded view by pressing 5. And then we can hold shift and we can deselect the ones that we don't want. 
Okay, the next thing we need to have a look at to manipulate some objects is the divisions. Now you'll find something like a cube or a plane. A plane is just a flat object like that, it has just one division per face by default. But anything circular, like a cylinder or a sphere or a cone, has 20 divisions going around the outside. And we can manipulate that by first going back to the select tool, because I don't want to accidentally scale this. I'll go back to my channel box, and under inputs, polycylinder1, if I click on the words polycylinder1, I can change these subdivisions. So I can click on the word subdivisions axis, and I'm going to go right down to perhaps 8, and you can make some interesting shapes. Try not to get carried away, try not to go up too high thinking it looks better, it looks smoother. We're going to look at smoothing objects in future tutorials. Okay, one last thing I'll show you is just how to actually combine some of these, these different tools together. So if I go back to the default 20 divisions, if I select vertex mode, so right click, vertex, I'm going to select every other one going around the very top. So just be careful not to select the ones that you don't want. Okay, we could even press 4, have a quick look at the bottom, make sure nothing's highlighted yellow, so that's all good. Press 5 to go back to shaded. Use the move tool, and I'm going to move that up. And what I can also do is go to my rotate tool, and I can rotate that around slightly. And you can make some quite interesting shapes. What we can also do there, if you wanted to select all of these ones that we had previously, so every other one, I'm going to press space, I'm going to go into my front view, and I'm going to press 4 for wireframe, and I could just highlight all of those at the top. Now if we count these, if I go back to my select tool, it looks like we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It looks like we've just got 10 selected, but don't forget the orthographic view is just two-dimensional. If we now go into our perspective view, you could have a check, and we've still got 10. Okay, but now if we try the same thing with the very bottom, so I'm just going to deselect this by clicking away, if I go back into my front view, rather than highlighting at the top, I'm going to highlight the bottom. And if you count that again, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 11. But if we go back to perspective, if you have a look underneath, you've actually got all 20 selected. Okay, It's just because in the orthographic view it's 2D, it won't show you the front and the back at the same time. You have to just remember that it's there. So have a bit of fun with these tools. Make some notes, take some screenshots, keep saving your progress. If it goes wrong, don't worry, just keep practicing. Stay tuned for future tutorials. And in the next few, we'll have a look at making a circular table with multiple table legs. And we can look at grouping that together and duplicating that.